Good morning, everybody, and welcome to worship. I am so glad that you've joined us here. My name is Reverend Mary Jo Bray, and I'm the pastor of Hampton Park Christian Church, and I'm glad that you've joined us. I thought I would take just a couple of minutes and come outside today and take a, a few deep breaths at one of our beautiful metro parks. I'll tell you, I was down a couple of days this week, laid low with some side effects from a vaccination. I didn't want to move, and yet I felt God saying, come on, get up, MJ, you got things to do. And so I did, but it's nice to be out here today. It kind of reminds me of the story today. Jesus went to his friend's house and he found his friend's mother-in-law was very sick with a fever. And so he took her by the hand and, and she got up and he healed her and she served them. It's a great story about how God pulls us up and gives us the strength that we need to serve one another. But let me not get ahead of myself. Let me just say that I'm glad that you're here. I'm looking forward to celebrating communion with you today as we worship. I'm just looking forward to spending this time with you in worship and in prayer. And if you get a chance today, at least stick your nose out the door and take a couple of deep breaths in the beautiful, wonderful world of God's creation this beautiful winter's day. God bless you all and welcome to worship. Please join me in the call to worship. God comes into a world filled with uncertainties and darkness. God seeks out the voids of belief and conviction. God embraces the wounded and broken. God knocks down the walls of division and strife. God is the candle shining in the darkness of our days. God is the light of our lives. God is the one who makes all things new. Praise be to God, now and forevermore. Please join me in a spirit and attitude of prayer. You lift us up to the heights, O God. On wings like eagles, you enable us to soar with the possibilities both within our own souls and within this world which needs so much care. And yet it is not the bright skies where we most often live. We are here with our feet on the ground, your feet planted firmly beside us as we try to walk without fainting. Walk through life changes, moves, births, aging, and loss. We need your strength to not grow weary as we continue to hope for new life amidst old attitudes and injuries. We long to run and not grow faint as we work for your compassion and wholeness for all people and all creatures and the very earth. 
Lift us up to the heights, O God, so that we may catch a glimpse of the vast possibilities of your shalom, even as we pray for it here on earth, by praying as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. The scripture lesson this morning is from Mark chapter 1, verses 29 through 34. After Jesus and his disciples left the synagogue, they went over to Simon and Andrew's home, and James and John were there with them. Simon's mother-in-law was sick in bed with a high fever. They told Jesus about her right away. He went to her bedside, and as he took her by the hand and helped her to sit up, the fever suddenly left, and she got up and prepared a meal for them. That evening at sunset, many sick and demon-possessed people were brought to Jesus, and a huge crowd of people from all over Capernaum gathered outside the door to watch. So Jesus healed great numbers of sick people who had many different kinds of diseases, and he ordered many demons to come out of their victims. But because they knew who he was, he refused to allow the demons to speak. So last week, we learned that Jesus' very first action in the Gospel of Mark was to cast out uh, an unclean spirit from a man. And we talked about how God 
will intervene in anything that keeps us from an abundant life with God. Well, that pattern continues this week. Jesus is healing people from everywhere, and his fame had spread. Remember that from last week? He got famous very quickly, and so people were coming to him with all kinds of ailments, everything from hangnails to leprosy. They brought people to Jesus for healing. And meanwhile, after that healing in the synagogue, they went to Simon Peter's house, and there Jesus discovered Simon Peter's mother-in-law in the grip of a fever and on the brink of death. And the Bible says that Jesus simply takes her by the hand and he raises her up. And then in Mark's very direct and uncomplicated style, he says, the fever left her and she was healed and she served them. Now, I've always wondered why they couldn't just give her an hour or two to recuperate or why they couldn't get up and make their own sandwiches. I don't know, but it's the verb that answers that question, the verb. Simon Peter's mother-in-law served immediately after having been raised. The verb is diakoneo, the same verb that Jesus uses later on in Mark to describe the essence of his own ministry. In Mark chapter 10, verse 45, he says, I have come to serve rather than be served. It's where we get our own word diaconate, those who serve. It's the same word. Jesus brought Simon's mother-in-law back so that she could be whom she was called to be, one who serves, so that she could do what she was supposed to do, and that is to serve others. What about you? Have you ever felt like God has brought you back from the brink to be something more or to do something different? Have you ever felt that you were called back from a place that was not really fully you so that you could be you again, so that you could be completely whole? God, if you save me from this, I'll do fill in the blank. Goodness, what about us, church, in the middle of this pandemic? Last March, when we closed our doors to in-person worship, I thought, what, what are we going to do? This little church is going to die from this. And yet, God took us by the hand and raised us up and said, get up, church. Get up and serve. God made a way for us through technology. God brought us back from the brink to reach hundreds of people online. God has made a way for us to learn how to Zoom to stay connected and to communicate with one another. We could have just folded up and done nothing, but God has pulled us up to serve. And I said from the beginning of the pandemic, what are we going to learn from this? How is God going to change us through this? What is God pulling us up to do? And those questions still are on the forefront of my mind. And not just in the church. I think that the message is for all of us. What is God taking you by the hand and pulling you up to do or to be? How is your life going to be different when all of this is over? I mean different in a good way. How are you and I going to make a difference? How are we going to serve? God has taken us by the hand and God is pulling us up so that we can serve. Now what that looks like for you, I don't know. But I do know that God wants you to be whom you were fully called to be, whom you were fully meant to be to do what you are fully called to do. God will restore us. God will restore our community. And then what? I hope that we go out together and serve one another with joy because that's 
what we were called to do. I invite you to think about in your own life how God is pulling you up and how God is asking you to do what you're called to do, to serve others with joy. Amen. that we celebrate as Christians at the table of Holy Communion. We unite as one, as followers of Jesus Christ. Please join with me in prayer. Dear Lord, the psalmist sang praises of your greatness. He heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. He determines the number of the stars and gives to all of them their names. Great is our Lord, and the Lord takes pleasure in those who hope in his steadfast love. Psalm 147. What greater love than giving to your people the gift of your Son? As we prepare to take the symbols of communion, we remember what they represent. The bread, the broken body of the crucified Christ. The wine, the spilled blood from his body. We know that the symbols also represent the resurrection, so that in believing in Christ, we know that we will have eternal life. Thank you, Lord, for that gift. Christ's name we pray. Amen. And on that night in the upper room, he took the bread, he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And likewise the cup, saying, This is the new covenant in my blood. Drink all of it in remembrance of me. Please join with me in taking of communion, an act shared by all Christians. Amen. O God, with astonishment, we see that you constantly renew our strength. 
allow us not to forget your presence, even in adversity. And, in our turn, we will renew our gratefulness, and we will sing of your love forever. Amen.